What is going on guys? Welcome to another video. This is your boy Eric Chase and we are doing another great edition of Casting Choices. Yay! Now, um, we are coming back and we're doing a video about the gin. Now, whether I've uh, uploaded this first or second because I'm doing two videos on this, I don't know. But we're doing the gin. <laughs> the gin from the Wishmaster series. And the Wishmaster series has been out for uh, since in the 90s. It was one of those really cool horror slasher type films that came out. And it's basically about this gin, which is an evil genie. And he just grants people's wishes. Uh, and he twists them. So if you wish for something simple, like... Um, a lifetime supply of, like apples or something then like maybe a big old basket of apples will, like fall on and kill you or something like that or like what he did in the movie one girl said she wanted to be beauty stay beautiful and he turned her into a mannequin so you, you know there's uh there's a, a lot to play um uh, with when it comes to the word and the wishes and understanding and interpretations and all but the gist is the gin is an asshole but a likable one that we all like and love now there's been two uh, guys to actually play the actual character of the witch master one is andrew devolf uh, who's awesome who played in the first two uh films and then later on in the third film and the fourth film which let's just be all frank and shitty movies probably and should not have been made uh but uh, John Novak actually plays the gen in the last two, which I'm not going to say he did a bad job, but I'm not going to say he was particularly good either. So, anyways, in this episode of Casting Choices, of course, we're going to be casting for the gen, and I have four actors here. Um, we have Willem Dafoe, Michael Fassbender, Marshala, Marshala Ali, and Madge Mickelson. And I like... Uh, Marsha Halla Ali, I think he's a fantastic actor. I just keep messing up his name. Uh, but anyways, so let's go ahead and get into this video, guys. Now, Willem Dafoe has been in the game for quite some time. The man has been just making out, making movies. And as good as I, I've seen him play a lot, um, a lot of great movies, actually. I, in fact, I forgot, um, I forgot one of them. Say I almost messed messed up. Uh, it looked like crap, but at least I wrote it down. So I don't know now. But a lot of move, uh, but a lot of good. And the reason why I think, uh, not only does he have a fantastic acting uh, portfolio, but he has a great uh, screen on screen presence as well. Now the one one of the things that I do like uh, him as as an actor is his capacity to play, play bad guys. Now his, he play a lot of bad guys, not like that, but the guy has a capacity for some great and dark characters. Now a few, just a few of the roles uh, that I would say is, of course, of course, I have to mention his performance as Norman Osborn, aka the Green Goblin, in the first Spider-Man uh, film of the same Raimi trilogy. He was freaking fantastic. The man actually could be menacing. He actually had a bit of humor to him. He had a lot of uh, like just great, great. Um, character to him he had a lot of interesting i got a lot of great character which i didn't mind and what's made him so awesome was his ability to switch between two characters so effectively the way he did something like that right there in itself would be a good way to uh, a good uh, element to add to a recast uh wishmaster uh Jin character so i wouldn't mind seeing that uh he also played uh in the um yeah, he played in uh, Speed Two, which wasn't which wasn't bad, which wasn't bad. Uh, uh, he was the bad guy in Triple X: State of the Union, and uh, he was pretty cool, but it just wasn't like he wasn't not memorable in the least. <laughs> but I, I would say definitely the performance that he gave as Norman Osborn pretty much lands him here. Now another great freaking performance that I would say he's like fucking owned that I think would just be great is when he played Ryuk in the twin Ryuk I don't know how I say his name uh Ryuk in the 2017 
live action Death Note movie. He was honestly the best, quite easily the best thing about the freaking movie. Not only was his interpretation of Re dark, but he looked freaking awesome. He was just scary and just dreadful. And that right there just makes him just like, yes, if he were to be cast, I would just like, hey, what you did with the Ryu character, definitely just bring it to the gym. I would not mind seeing that. And he has a very unique voice as well. So, I think those elements, like I said, the man's a fantastic actor. He's done great as the Green Goblin. He did great as Ryuk. So, I definitely would say, okay, if he was going to do a reboot of The Wishmaster, he can definitely play the Jin. Now, second on the list, of course, is Michael Fassbender. Now, Michael Fassbender has been in a game since about the early 2000s, I think. And, uh, well, at least as far as, as at least as, for, uh, as far as films are concerned. I'm not sure. I forgot about the checking the television one, but, or like theater or something like that. But the guy's actually got a bit of a portfolio by him. Now, the reason why I like him is not only does he have a pretty interesting and a pretty unique voice set himself, uh, he's actually been in some uh, a lot of interest, a lot of things as well himself. He's been in thrillers. He's been in sci-fi. He's been in action, comic book. Uh, he's been in uh, some like the Greek or Roman, which is one of my favorite uh, films, Centurion, as well as Three Hundred. So the guy's been ar uh, been around, but the main his two main uh, performances that was like okay, if they did remake, I, I could see him as the Jin is his performance as David in the Prometheus slash Alien slash whatever the hell that series is. Terrible ass series. Patui, Patui. A spit on that series. Uh, as well as his performance as Magneto in Excuse me, in the X-Men series. I think he'll do a fantastic job just with those two performances by himself. Now, the reason why I say that is, again, the guy's actually pretty well-rounded. Uh, one of my favorite movies he was in was The Light Between Oceans, and that was a romance. So, I did not, I do not mind seeing him uh, play uh, play that role. Now, I did see a little clip of him playing something on 12 Years a Slave, and I'm like, oh, so he plays the asshole character. Uh, but I hadn't seen 12 Years a Slave, so I can't really sit there and just throw it out there like that. But... Having said that, you know, um, as Magneto, I could definitely see him being very charismatic, uh, being able to talk people and making deals and stuff like that. Because I think that's one good way of Jin being pretty cool is his ability to manipulate others into making wishes. So I can definitely see him. Uh, and then, like I said, he's not a bad looking man either. That's another thing that... Uh, will work for the character as well, you know, I, and I like Willem Dafoe, but, you know, Willem Dafoe like the best looking guy, you know, he kind of aged, the age done got on him a little bit, so, um, I can actually see Michael Fassbender pulling up, uh, and also the character of David, because even though that series is, uh, excuse me guys, it's my phone beeping, but, um, uh, I can actually see, uh, see this, um, I actually see him being on that because, David was actually a interesting. He was an interesting character, but he was a pretty dark character, and I wouldn't mind seeing that. Uh, and in in the way that he was kind of like manipulating people and stuff like that, I wouldn't mind seeing that some of that being brought to the Jin character as well. So I could, it definitely shows that Fastbender can be kind of a darker role, and I think that that actually works. Even though you do see that um, a bit in the X Men series as him being Magneto, but. All in all, I wouldn't mind actually seeing him actually play that role. Uh, so, next on the list is Marshall Hala Ali. I think he's just fantastic. One of my favorite all-time performances of the guy, of course, is... Um, oh, what's the guy's name? Stokes? Um, I can't remember the name. But he played the one guy, uh, Cottonmouth in Luke Cage. And I like that because... You know what? Marshall Hala Ali would not be a bad war machine either. Okay, but I'm going to put that on something else. <laughs> I need to write that down. That's actually not a bad idea. See, guys, y'all are helping me every freaking day. That's what I'm talking about. But it, I like him because he's actually, uh, he's got a pretty unique voice in uh, in himself, but 
the guy has a lot of depth. I mean, of course, he's played uh, some pretty serious roles, and most of them do concern, like, you know, um, the gangster roles and stuff like that. But he's actually been in other things. It was a true detective, I believe, is uh, one of his uh, in, like uh, act, active roles that he's actually been playing in, which uh, I've seen a little bit of. I thought he did a pretty good job as well. He's done a bit more than that. Uh, he was in Moonlight, um, honestly the best part of the freaking movie. Uh, he was in Predators, even though he didn't really get a good role. Uh, Curious Case of Benjamin Button, which is a fucking fantastic movie. He was in The Hunger Games. He was a good character in The Hunger Games. He was in Alphas. He's been in uh, a lot of stuff, but I've really enjoyed him in The Luke Cage. And I like the depth that the character has, and I like the fact that he can be a dick, but he can also be somewhat sympathetic and somewhat, like, you can actually see, like, the dude actually has the depth to be that type of character. And I think this would be something interesting for him to branch out. It'd be cool to see him playing, like, this sci-fi, not the sci-fi, this, like, horror fantasy type villain. And I'm interested to see if they, uh, if, if they could, if he end up, or if he would accept that role. And then, like I said, he's not a bad-looking guy either, so he can do, he can flip on both the sides of the fence of being a human character, manipulating people, as well as the gen part itself. So I can actually see him playing a strong gen character as well and for our final one the uh mr mads mickelson now he is an awesome guy i first got put on to him when he played in casino royale with david craig when he rebooted the james bond series and i have been trying to follow this guy uh since because the man actually just scored points with me on that he was a great villain and he does tend to uh play like like villain characters because uh, he was the villain in Three Musketeers. He was the villain in Hannibal, of course. The television series, a good Hannibal, by the way. Uh, he was, of course, the villain in Doctor Strange. Of course, he was the villain in Casino Royale. Uh, he played in his new movie, Polar, which looks pretty awesome, but I haven't got a chance to watch it yet. So, anyways, I think he's definitely, uh, he definitely will play a great gen. And I like his voice, too. Uh, and because, like I said, he's charismatic. The man actually has a lot of depth in his, and range into his performances. I mean, all four of these guys are fantastic actors. They are on that level. And they will all do the character of the Jin some justice. But I do like uh, Mickelson. I think it would be pretty cool seeing him play, like, a horror, a horror icon. Because he's done so uh, well with so much of the other things that he's been in. So, I will not uh, hold it against him to just uh, to even try for this role. And I like uh, seeing actors like this. Actors that have the ability to step over that line. Being able to, to explore new options. Because one of the things that I, about, I, liked him, I, I liked about him in Clash of the Titans remake was the fact that I really hadn't seen him in a film like this. Uh, he was like this really strong com commander and commandering type dude. So I really wouldn't mind seeing him bring that uh, to this um, to uh, the reboot uh, a reboot of the Wishmaster series, which I don't really want them to reboot it. I kind of want them to just continue it because everything feels so episodic anyway. So it's not like they're telling the same story or going off the same story. But I think uh, Mads Mikkelsen would be a good gen as well. In fact, if there was anyone I could compare to, you know, uh, Dukov anyway, Andrew Dukov in his list, it probably would be um, Mads Mikkelsen. So I would not mind seeing him play the gen. All four of these guys are freaking awesome. Let's go ahead and go back down that list one more time. Willem Dafoe, Michael Fassbender, Mashahala. Ali and Mads Mikkelsen, guys, in the comment section below, let me know your thoughts about which one of these fantastic actors you think could potentially play an awesome gen character for either a Wishmaster continuation or reboot. Uh, be sure to hit that like, share, subscribe, and that notification button to get the best of what we got going on on this channel, guys, and we'll definitely catch you guys later. Peace out.